Your Money, Your Life, Controlled by You, podcast, with your hosts Ashley Goins and Jackie Hendricks. Are you tired of feeling like you're losing control? We will use our knowledge and our experience to help you gain confidence in your ability to create a secure financial future and live the life that you desire. Welcome to Your Money, Your Life, Controlled by You podcast with your host, Jackie Hendricks, and myself, Ashley Goins. This is a bonus episode just for you guys, because Jackie, there is something out there that is burning my ass alive. (laughs) Okay. And what is that? Is these people out there giving false information or not disclosing everything. Correct. If you are following somebody on social media, on a different podcast, or even on YouTube, and you go and you ask them, what kind of an account are they referring to? And they will not tell you, but yet they'll tell you, click on my link, schedule an appointment with me. Or they'll talk all around it and never give you a definite answer. You need to be following somebody else. Most definitely. So, some things we've noticed is, like mentioned in the last few episodes, somebody that will tell you, oh, I took $100,000 and I made them a millionaire. Okay, yes, that's possible. (laughs) But you didn't do that in one year. You didn't do it in five. And you might be lucky if it was 10. How about telling the truth and telling that it was 15 to 20 years, if not longer? Down the road. And you guys, you do have to be your own advocate. You have to ask the right questions. So that's what we're here about today is just to help you along the way to make the right decisions from the very beginning, and that's choosing an agent. And with an agent, if you ask a direct question, like you said, Jackie, and y'all can tell I'm fired up about this one, (laughs) because this is my passion. My passion is to help people truly protect what they have and not be taken advantage of by that, so to speak, and I'm not downgrading anybody somebody that will tell you whatever you want to hear so it's for the betterment of their pocket instead of what's best for you that burns me up and if and hear me clearly on this if that agent can't answer your question that's not the right person or if If they truly tell you, let me rephrase that, Jackie. If they tell you, I don't know that answer, but give me 24 to 48 hours to get you the answer, then by all means, yes, please stay with that agent because they're going to do their homework and make sure they give you the correct information. That's very true. And a lot of times you just have to pay attention to what you're feeling too. If you've got Red flags, stop signs going off in the back of your brain. No, do not do it. If it gives you a bad feeling, do not do it. Don't work with that person. Find somebody that you're compatible with. Now, I will tell you, I have heard and seen there are some really slick operators out there. Like the old saying goes, I've got some great land in Florida I can sell you. Now, of course, it's in the dismal swamp and it's not going to do any of us any good. But you really do have to pay attention. Another thing you can do is ask for referrals. Listen to your friends who have worked or may have knowledge of the way a person does their business dealings. A lot of us have known some really slick people out there who can just sell you just about anything. But my suggestion here is seek wise advice from other people who have done business in the area and know how this person deals. And people are going to be honest. If they've been burned, they're going to let you know. 
if, if they've had a good experience with that person, they'll let you know. But again, keep your radar up, listen, get referrals, get advice from people who've been in the industry itself. Who would you recommend if you were going to get this type of insurance? And go from there. And the thing is, this doesn't just apply to insurance agents. It also goes with financial advisors. So, <laughs> yep, we're just going to put it out there. Anybody that is telling you about a compound interest account and does not tell you what vehicle it is, is for one, nine times out of 10, not a, a, not a financial advisor because they don't have their securities license. And they're trying to be that snake in the grass to get you pulled in and then tell you, but they don't disclose everything still. Yeah. And that's one thing. If you're omitting information, that's still not telling the whole truth. Exactly. So when we look at how many times we're asked, um, are you a financial advisor? Absolutely not. I'm not a CPA. I can give you my best case scenario based on things that I've faced in my own personal life or things that some of my clients have faced. So our but, personal experience, yes. Exactly. But I am not licensed as a CPA, as a financial advisor. Oh. I am an insurance agent that also operates in the financial field. We do financial services. And that's the thing. It's about being honest, upfront, letting people know where we stand. I don't want to be a financial advisor. Now, I'll have people ask me, well, should I keep things in the market? It depends on your interim goals, where you want to be. If you can afford to lose some money, great. You know, if you can afford to put your money in the market for those upswings, great. I will give you some names of some good advisors I know. We work in conjunction with one another. We're not opposition. And it's about seeing and safeguarding what you have and making it grow to its greatest potential. But not everybody sees it that way. A lot of times it's us versus them. And it shouldn't be that way when our customers are concerned. We're, we're not in opposition to these people. It should be more of a collaborative effort, definitely. And a lot of times you will find financial advisors that are very savvy and they know all the little details that include what we do. But a lot of times they have their particular niche and that's where they're running with. That's where they're, where they're promoting their expertise. Here is something major that I want to discuss. Since we're talking about stuff that burns me up. <laughs> this is not about me, but it's about getting the information out there to people. Okay. If you're following somebody that's telling you, oh, no, you need to move your 401k. Bullshit. Because, for one, you might be getting an employer match right now. Mm-hmm. You're going to take away that employer match, that freedom or that free money mm -hmm. that you're getting. Okay. Now, if you're closer to retirement age and you can't face those risks of losing money, absolutely. You can look and see what you're able to do. But if somebody is on social media, on any platform telling you, oh, no, you can always move your money. Nope. Mm -mm. That's a lie. Well, it goes back to just common sense, really. A lot of times people will tell you, my way is the only way. And we know that's not true. 
but they will sell you that hook, line, and sinker. And you got to realize there is more than one way. Let's say you live in a city. You want to go to the capital. There is more than one road to get to that capital. And there is also more than one kind of vehicle that you can go to there. You can take a plane, you can take a train, you can take a bus, you can take, ride a bike if you're that adventurous, or you can take your car. So there's many ways that you can get to the same point using the different vehicles. And what really burns me is when you do have people say, it's my way or the, my way is the only way. When we know that's not true, and then they really just make the person feel bad. Absolutely. When you look at some of these people, Jackie, that really talk down to their clients, mm -hmm. like the clients don't know their rear from a hole in the ground, that's insane. Another thing that needs to be addressed that we see a lot of is... They only want you to buy a book. I get it. Congratulations. Round of applause. You are a published author. But you don't have to push your book to give somebody advice. Right. Absolutely. But then again, you know, there are a lot of books out there <laughs> and you're looking for information, see what's going to fit your needs. But if somebody's trying to push a book, a class, anything like that, then unless it's something you're really looking for, I wouldn't do it. You know, Jackie, and I know this because, yes, I watch TikTok. Yes, I watch YouTube and I tend to just being honest, tend to follow people that either for one, make me laugh for mm -hmm. two are giving me valuable information or three are easy on the eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if they're easy on the eyes, does that mean that they're giving me the correct information? No, mm -hmm. not always. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> it's amazing how blinded we can be when it comes to something being easy on the eyes or maybe even the sound or tone somebody uses to talk to us, how we can get lured into these things. You know, another thing to look at is when you're dealing with somebody, is their location. You know, you can do things remotely, but is it easy to get a hold of them? You know, is, are you going to be talking to that person directly? Or are you going to have to go through a bunch of other people or be put on hold and maybe get back to in a few days and a few weeks? Granted, sometimes that happens, but, you know, it's accessibility to that person. Exactly. That that is huge because if the if it's somebody that you're looking to trust with your finances, with your assets, with building your legacy, and they're not accessible for you to ask questions, whether it's sending an email, sending a text, calling them, um, meeting them face to face, if they're too busy for you now. Just imagine five years from now. True, very true. And again, you need to look at their credentials, their track record, if they've got a website or their different social medias, and even look at the comments. You know, are people, yes, we do have a lot of naysayers. We do have a lot of trolls out there. There, you know, people tend to like being negative rather than positive, but you really do need to pay attention to these things. You know, if uh, Joe Schmo over here ends up being, you know, oh, I don't like this person, blah, 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 and just dissing somebody, 
Well, maybe that's the way he gets his jollies by, you know, huh? making somebody. Uh, there are, oh, maybe I shouldn't say that. No, it's fine. You know, but some people, they're not happy unless they're spreading their miserableness or. Misery loves it, company. It really does. So you got to also balance that out. But, you know, be wise. Look at people. Look at. You can tell a lot of times their motive. Are they giving you different options? Are they looking at the whole picture? Are they asking you questions? Something very simple. Are they asking you what you want? Where do you want to be? Very simple questions. And not going in and having you sit down in front of them and say, hey, this is what we're going to do. Well, they didn't ask you anything. How do they even know where you are, what you want, and what do you want to do? And how real are they with you? Mm -hmm. You do not want somebody that is just basically scripted. Mm -hmm. You don't want somebody that is not looking out for the best interest of you. And somebody that doesn't have the education and training or just put it out there, Ashley, common sense and common decency to do what's in the best interest of you and your future. Yeah. That is so important. And a lot of times, like I said before, pay attention to that inner voice. Your, your inner guide, whatever you want to call it. But pay attention to that because nine times out of 10, it's not going to do you wrong. If you got a bad feeling about something. And also, you know, Jackie, also, I would, I would definitely say, and this comes from my background in law enforcement, pay attention to their body language. Are they making eye contact with you? Are they looking around or are they busybody? Because those should be red flags to you. Mm -hmm. Absolute red flags. Are they rushing through something? Just going around the question that you've asked. Yeah. That is huge because we know this, that there are a lot of people that will, they'll hear your question, but they'll ignore your question and go on to the next topic or subject mm -hmm. because they're trying to follow their own agenda and not really take the time to listen to you to find out what you want and that's important another thing that we haven't really highlighted on is the difference between an independent agent and a captured agent <laughs> yeah well these are things this is something you should know when you're going to talk to somebody. Because if I am a captured agent, that means that I only work for X, Y, and Z company. And I can only sell you X, Y, and Z products. Even though another provider might have something better, I cannot sell that to you. Mm -hmm. Unless you're going there specifically for that product, that product fills a specific need then you want to look for a more independent agent. And so I've kind of told them what a captured agent is. They're under that one company and they cannot sell anything else. So you give us what an independent agent is. Well, you and I, mm -hmm. 100%, is we can offer a plethora of solutions to meet each individual's needs with many different carriers because you may be on a medication that one carrier accepts and the other doesn't. So if I was a captive agent and I came to you and said, okay, I'm albuterol for an example. If I met with you and you told me you were on albuterol. Well, if I'm a captive agent, my company XYZ may not allow for that so right. guess what now you feel lost you feel defeated 
because I was not able to help you. But as an independent, being able to represent multiple carriers, I have more options to where if it's ABC, DEF company, that I can now get you the coverage that you need to fill the desires and wants of life that you're looking for. There are different things different providers allow, other ones that are considered exclusions. So because we have a greater resource or greater resources, then we're able to look at a multitude of providers to see what is going to be the best fit for you and your needs. Now, if I went and just applied for the one and I knew, hey, they don't cover that, then that's, that's going to be a ding against you as the client. It might prevent you from getting an insurance that does cover it at a later date. So this is why we're very passionate about letting you know what you need to be doing to protect yourself, what to be looking for in an agent when you're looking for insurance policies, because it is not about us and what we can do, but how we can best serve you. And that's very interesting that you bring that point up. Because as, as I've noticed and seen with a lot of captive agents, they put pressure on the people mm -hmm. where as independent, we look at a holistic approach. If it's insurance you're looking for, great. If it's an annuity or a Roth IRA or, you know, a retirement solution, yes, a lot of life insurance, quote unquote, I guess is the best way to do this, companies offer those products just because it might be from National Life Group or Mutual of Omaha or Emeritus. Um, Athene is another great company. You know, there's- This goes on and on and on. Exactly. Just because it might have life group or life insurance behind the name doesn't mean that that's all that they offer. Right. So as independents and us being affiliated with them and being able to represent that company, we're able to offer those products as a solution and um, not necessarily have to have the same series six, series seven um, licensure that a financial advisor has to have because they do variable products where we mm -hmm. focus more on fixed and indexed products to make sure that you don't have that risk. Financial advisors have to go through a lot of education, but so do we. We are held accountable. We have to go through a lot to get our licenses too. Maybe not as much as them, but we are bound legally to represent our clients to the best of our abilities. And we're regulated by our prospective states. So just like an attorney goes through and takes a bar exam, mm -hmm. we take a state exam as well. There's other classes that we have, uh, have to do in certain states to be able to do annuities, for instance. Yep. So let, let's take, for, for example, Illinois. To write, and, and me being in Virginia, to write an annuity in Illinois, I have to do an additional training just for that one state. Yep. Because we follow the laws and rules and regulations that come with each individual state. California, whole nother state. Yep. <laughs> Different laws and rules than what Illinois, Virginia, Florida, Texas, the list goes on. So don't think for one minute that we're less educated just because we don't have our series six or series seven. We're just educated in a different way. Absolutely. And, you know, every few years we have to recertify. It is part of a continuing education program that we go through. So, and then you have the agents kind of like us 
who tend to be a little nerdy and we love to learn <laughs> and we want to know how we can help our clients to the best of ability. So if we don't know something, we'll let you know. And then we'll come back with several answers, several scenarios, and try to figure out the best way to help you. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us on Your Money, Your Life, Controlled by You podcast. Next week, we'll be talking about annuities, another step in your track towards retirement. Be sure to join us on any of your favorite podcast platform and also YouTube. Find us on our Facebook page, Your Money, Your Life, Controlled by You.com. And be sure to like, subscribe, join, even write a review. That will help us gain traction in our podcast and get us out to more people. So thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next week.